Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the DLF Trade Show, the ultimate source of trade information post-NFL draft anywhere. It's right here. This is where you got to be. This is where you are because you're watching this, and I'm saying this, and you're listening to this. See mm -hmm. how that works? It's all, it's synergy. I One of those big corporate words, you know, from the, my office job. There you go. Synergy. <laughs> synergy. Nice. <laughs> Russ Fisher at Dynasty Ad House, Addison Hayes at Amaze Hayes underscore senior contributor. Don't forget about it. I didn't. <laughs> he did. All right. So, yeah, the NFL draft happened. Awesome. Cool. So, we want to sort of mush this all together. And we are going to start today with players that you should buy post NFL draft. Now, we talked about this a little bit last week with the Browns. The Browns. Um, it wasn't the team, the Browns. It was AJ Brown and Hollywood Brown because Addison's clever like that. And now we're here. We're going to, you know, be a little bit broader in this. We're going to talk about a couple of players. First on that list is someone on the same team and connected with one of those people. We're going to talk about Jalen Hurts, AJ Brown's new quarterback. And I love that we are seeing a little bit of a surge in Jalen Hurts' value because I think this might be taking away attention from the, he's just going to be replaced in a year. And this is, they're putting him in a position to succeed. So I think this takes a little bit of that fear away of the, he's only a one-year asset. He can be. I hope he's not. <laughs> <laughs> but but this is a good thing to me. So let's 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 see what the trades have to say, because like a good host, I did zero looking into anything that Addison did beforehand, and I'm just gonna you know learn it when you guys learn it. We're in this together. Synergy. Synergy. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right. We're great at this stuff. Twelve team super flex, one point five tight end premium. First trade we have is Jalen Hurts, the two oh eight. Alberto Quagbinum and Christian Kirk. That is four things I just listed. For Kyle Pitts, Jalen Hurts comes in at 514.9. The 208, 103.6. Albert O, 62.5. Christian Kirk, a disrespectful 61.7. Disrespectful. For a total of 742.7, .7, Kyle Pitts by himself, 783.2. It's funny, this is like a cross section of two things we've always talked about. You're supposed to overpay to get the best asset, but. If you're sending a quarterback and not getting one back, there's a bit of a tax on that as well. So I feel like at this point, like maybe the values should be somewhat even. But here's my problem with this. And here's why the answer to me is Pitts pretty easily. Oh. Besides Hurts, the rest of that is kind of trash. If this were Hurts and then something worth 250 points in the analyzer, I might feel differently. But... The 208 in a 12-team super flex league, if you're lucky, you're talking David Bell, John Mechie. If you're not lucky, you're talking Zamir White, Khalil... Shakir. Shakir, yes. Uh, it, and to me, that's a little bit lower than I... That That is a dart throw. That is... Something has to happen for this guy to get in there, get his shot. Maybe in two years he'll be able to do something. Uh, Albert O, it's, I agree with the 62.5. Let me put it that way. Yeah, he has this hype behind him because Fant is gone. Russell Wilson's there. Russell Wilson has never made a fantasy relevant quarterback, tight end. He's not always a fantasy relevant quarterback at the end of the seasons, also, but that's, that was just a, stumble on my words and then christian kirk i want like clearly i want christian kirk to be a thing but that is a very risky thing and if i'm trading pits away i need more solid and I, if i'm taking risk it's got to be better risk than these if this was hurts in a 23 first i would probably call that pretty even and take hurts because i would like getting the quarterback without giving one up mm -hmm. but these three little pieces to me mean absolutely nothing. These could be three things that never touch a lineup and three things you will never get this value in a trade back. 
So to me, it, this is pretty easily pits. So what if I told you that the three, the 208 Okwebunam and Christian Kirk was just Dallas Goddard instead? So you drop from Pitts to Goddard, get Jalen Hurts. Win. Right there. Okay. Hurts and Goddard. And uh, oh, hey, you even get a stack out of it. There you go. TJ Hawkinson's the next tight end up as well. Um, but I went, I'm assuming if you're doing Goddard, you're doing <laughs> Hawkinson. Yeah. Um, are you doing Friar Muth? Friarmouth in a second, sure. Because Friarmouth is, okay. isn't he's a little bit of a risk as well. He did great last year with a decrepit Ben, and now there's another wide receiver there. There's a new quarter, there's a chance of two different new quarterbacks, which most people aren't completely sold on either of them. So I want Friarmouth to keep being a thing, but I don't think it's a given that he will be. Yeah. I feel like if you go to to Friarmouth, like just replace Albert O with and Christian Kirk with Fryermuth, you can still keep that 208 because yeah, in this year's class in a super flex league, that 2.08 is not much at all. Yeah. Um, yeah, I definitely I saw that as well whenever I was putting this in here. Was like this is Jalen Hurts and Kyle Pitts, and like Jalen Hurts and a lot of nothing for yeah. <laughs> for Kyle Pitts, or a lot not like nothing, but like a lot of like potential and also a lot of floor as yep. well. Like you could buy yourself in, and talk yourself into Christian Kirk being a top 25 wide receiver as the wide receiver one for the Jaguars. Trevor Lawrence takes that next step forward. They're away from Urban Meyer and stuff. You know, you could talk yourself into that. You can talk yourself into Alberto actually being a tight end one now without Fant, you know, just because maybe he catches six, seven, eight, nine touchdowns, has another 500 receiving yards. He's very good in that regard. Um, and now all of a sudden that looks a little bit better. But on the flip side, like, the Broncos also drafted a tight end, you know, and it was Greg Dolchitz, so a tight end that we actually kind of liked in this class. Christian Kirk, while yeah, the wide receiver one on paper, like they still have Marvin Jones, they still have LaVisca Chenault, um, they still baby. have Travis Etienne out the backfield, they got Evan Ingram uh, in free agency. Like there's a lot of other like <laughs> on par kind of targets with Christian mm -hmm. Kirk that it might not necessarily be him. And plus Trevor Lawrence might just not be it. Um so the I don't value about that, but it's a possibility. Yeah. yeah. So the value of Kyle Pitts, I think, is just so safe and stable that I do kind of agree with you that I think I, I need more on top of Jalen Hurts than than those three pit than those three players and stuff. And it might not be that I need more. It's just like you said, a better one or two pieces than all three of those. Four for ones especially when they're even in a calculator very rarely feel worth it yeah yeah next trade is 12 team super flex with jalen hurts and jalen waddle that's i don't know if i've seen a trade with the both jalen's on one side jalen hurts and jalen waddle for josh allen 306 lavisca chanel and 311 jalen hurts 536.9 jalen waddle 505.7 for a total of 1042.6 Josh Allen, 954.2. Everything else is less than 50 points. The total is 1064.1. And we have our favorite little pop-up of caution. Team B is giving up the highest value asset and the most pieces in the deal. But again, you can really ignore the most pieces in the deal because 306, LaVisca Chenault, and the 311 are... Unless well, one of them is Conte Ingram. Then we have... Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> we, we can talk about that later. So many Keontae and Grim shares. It's wonderful. Uh, so, but I have to be honest here. I'm good with the Jalens. <laughs> Would I do it? You know what? Yeah, I would do this. I, I would send Josh Allen for Jalen Hurts and Jalen Waddle. Because the way I see it, I get it. Josh Allen's been the QB one, what, the past two years? That offense yeah. is still just getting better. It seems that the only thing I could say is like they're trying to get a, a receiving back back there. And that to me is because maybe they don't want Josh Allen to run as much. Like instead of running, dump it off to that guy, which is both good and bad. You're losing a little bit of points between rushing yards and passing yards. But uh, anything to make my quarterback not take all those hits, I'm a little happy about, even though he is built like a tank. 
But still, the the variance between Josh Allen and Jalen Hurts' scores, it, to me, won't be big enough where I would be sad that I did that downgrade and added Jalen Waddle, who I don't care that Tyreek Hill is there. is still a very good wide receiver. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was trying to figure out if Jalen Hurts and Jalen Waddle, if that was they were enough together to move off of just the security of having Josh Allen. You know, like the QB1, or at least the QB2, one of those in that top tier of everybody, quarterbacks in Superflex, because you're just going to have him probably just as long as you would have Patrick Mahomes at this yeah. point. Um, in a startup... Points per game, by the way, between Allen and... Hertz is three and a half points per game. Three and a half. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I would do this as well. I, I was just in um, a super flex startup as well. So I'm in the mode of like trading startup picks yeah. and moving all around the board and stuff. This would be equivalent to trading like the 1.01 or 1.02 for a late second and an early third. Yeah. Which I think I'm in on that one. I feel comfortable either way. If you just want to sit here and say, I'm just taking Josh Allen, go for it. If you're like, I'm willing to trade down to Jalen Hurts and pick up a Jalen Waddle, uh, or maybe a similar-ish kind of wide receiver in that range, I'm also good with that as well, too. I think that's a pretty good trade. Yeah, it's, it's spot on. Next player we want to talk about is a little less spot on with his accuracy. Oh. Oh. Zach Wilson. They, again, like we were talking with Hertz, they were just like, here, take stuff. Show us you're not bad. Let's let's go. You know, they bring in, they, they have Elijah Moore from last year. They draft Garrett Wilson. They draft Brees Hall. They draft, I mean, Jeremy Rucker, at least he's a local guy, you know, bring him in as a tight end because Uzuma, I think, is their tight end right now. He's so, solid-ish. Yeah, he's okay. But still, they are surrounding this guy with weapons, and they're giving him every chance to make them not look bad by taking him. 12-team Superflex, the 103 and Zach Wilson. I'm already going to take this side, I can tell you. For Christian McCaffrey and the 111. Yeah. Yeah. 103 is 498.6. Zach Wilson, 258.6 for a total of 757.2. Christian McCaffrey, 561.9. The 111, 226.6. Total of 784.5. I get it. Christian McCaffrey's Christian McCaffrey. I get it. Zach Wilson is kind of Zach Wilson. Man, would would you would you send the 103 to get Christian McCaffrey right now? Uh, you're asking the guy who just took Christian McCaffrey 101 to best ball league yesterday. <laughs> um, yeah, I still would. I would not. I still all. would. Listen, I'm still, I will, I, I I still believe. I still believe that if we get like 13 or 14 games out of Christian McCaffrey, you're getting the RB1. Okay. I'm not there. In which case, right away, this is super easily the 103 and Wilson because I'll take the 103 over McCaffrey and I'll take Wilson over the 111. Yeah. Yeah, I would definitely take Wilson over the 111, that's for sure. <clears throat> and I would take the 103 over Christian Mc or Christian McCaffrey over the 1.03. So, I mean, that's why the trade is separated by 30 fantasy points <laughs> or 30 analyzer points. So, but like since I'm completely one-sided on this one, like w how do you feel about this? Like do you, do you agree with these values? Do you think you would do either or both sides of this? I would definitely do both sides of this. The way I see this is one of these teams kind of needs a quarterback and it's kind of done with Christian McCaffrey and they're still you're they're using the name cache of CMC to go out and get a quarterback plus in Zach Wilson a high upside quarterback um the other side I see is maybe you got Zach Wilson at a luxury uh you know last rookie draft you had like the 105 106 and he was just there so you took him um you're competing and you're cashing in to be able to get Christian McCaffrey and at the 111 you're at least getting a a wide receiver that was that we like before the cliff completely falls off in super flex leagues for value and talent. Um, so at least you're still in that range. 
I see both sides of this completely. Again, this is another one of those like with Josh Allen where like you want Christian McCaffrey, go for it. You want the 1.03 and the addition of Zach Wilson, you know, go for it. I don't really know how I feel about Zach Wilson. I know, like John Hogue has been saying that he's like the biggest buy um, out of like almost every single quarterback. He, I think he, John has him ranked as the highest 2021 rookie right now, like above. Uh, I think he has him below Lawrence, but above everybody else. Like Fields, Lance, Mac. I think that's where we're at. I the upside get it. Is, the upside's that's, there. Saying that out loud is a little rough, but I get it. <laughs> like I just, you know, like we say, we, we talk a lot about like he was able to start kind of put things together at the end of the year. Yeah. But like these were the last six game stat lines for him over the final six weeks. 227 and two. 202 and 0, 170 and 0, 102, 1, 234 and 1, 87 and 1. You know what I'm not hearing? Interceptions. Uh yeah, he didn't throw any he didn't throw any picks. And he was saved in a couple of those games by having rushing touchdowns. No, yeah, exactly. But to me, that's still good because the knock on Wilson was bad decision making. Right. And again, I uh, maybe completion percentage was bad. Maybe tar- accuracy was bad. But what I'm seeing is he didn't pull like a Trubisky where you just throw it straight to a defense, like the linebacker who's right in front of you, who's like six yards in front of the receiver you, you were trying to throw the ball to. Like there wasn't any of that. There wasn't any dumb boneheaded moves. Hopefully that doesn't, you know, hopefully he can build off of that and regain the ceiling while keeping away those mistakes. But that that's a good sign to me. Yeah. And I will add, too, for five of those six games, Elijah Moore didn't play. Oh, there you go. He, he, had, no, he had nothing. Nothing. So he was throwing to, like, Corey. D- I think that was the Braxton Berrios breakout <laughs> from last year. Um, So, yeah, it was Corey Davis and Braxton Berrios. So essentially you're giving him – back elijah moore and you're adding in garrett wilson and you're adding breeze hall zach wilson elijah moore get that stack baby and cole Komet, who you kind of wanted to talk about today also Mm -hmm. for mac jones the 111 and aj green so zach wilson 258.6 elijah moore 247.3 cole Komet, 39.7 for a total of 545.6 team b mac jones 343.4 the 111 is 222.6, AJ Green 12.2, total of 578.3. So for all intents and purposes, this trade is a Cole Komet apart. Elijah Moore over the 111 for me. Mm-hmm. Cole Komet over AJ Green. Mm-hmm. And I get it. Mac Jones is worth more than Zach Wilson, but no. Yeah. So I'd rather just take the Zach Wilson. Like there's not much ceiling on the Mac Jones side at all Mm -hmm. elijah moore if anything there's no reason he can't be safe like he did really really well when he and you know super bowl mvp mike white was in there um but even with zach wilson he was still doing well and adding a good players on your team doesn't make you worse you know elijah moore is still good enough to earn targets he will still get them But he won't have 18 defenders on him because Garrett Wilson's going to grab a few of them. So I like that stack. Cole Komet is a nice grab with, sorry, Velas Jones, but like you didn't really do anything to make me sway away from Mooney and Komet. So there's a chance that Komet's going to build, I think he had like 80 something targets last season. You know, so there's a way to build on that too. And on the other side, Mac Jones is Mac Jones. The big weapon they brought in were were Devontae Parker and some dude who runs too fast that Mac Jones can't throw the ball far enough to get to. (laughs) Dang. And the 111 is cool. I mean, it's a gamble with, like, Christian Watson, Jahan Dotson. Um, If you want to be that guy and go uh, Keyshawn Vaughn yourself, some James Cook, that's cool. But it's past that top tier for me. So to me again, pretty easily the Zach Wilson side. Yeah, I'll just I'll like one for one. I'll take Wilson over Mac Jones. I'll take more over the one eleven. I'll take Komet over AJ Green. Yeah, again, 
I agree with what you said, but I get that the analyzer says, and I believe consensus would say Jones is worth more than Wilson. Yeah, I uh, I think that would be pretty close now. Okay. I, still, I think there are those people that kind of see both of them, like the floors on both of them. Mac has a little bit of a higher floor because I think he's just, you know, he's just like safer. He's going to be yes. like a 202 guy almost every single week, basically. And that's like QB 17. Yeah, <laughs> um, get your but, 18 points and call it a day. I mean, it's fine. Right. Uh, Zach Wilson can definitely be lower than that. But Wilson, there are people that are just going to be like, at that point, if you're having both of them as your QB three, why not take the QB three that has the potential to be a QB one, you know, and or at least be a in higher end two started. than Mac would be right. Like a Derek Carr, you know, you would love yeah. Derek Carr as your QB two. You'd absolutely love him as your QB three. You know, if Zach Wilson turns into Derek Carr and Mac Jones turns into, uh, you know, just like <laughs> Mac Jones, I guess, like what he is already, <laughs> um, then you would rather have Zach Wilson. Yeah. So, and Elijah Moore of the 112, 111, that one's easy. I've seen, I saw Elijah Moore get traded for the 112 and the 212, and I'm like, what are we doing? That's like, that's a panic sell. That's that's what you're doing. You you are, just, oh, yeah. no, they brought in a wide receiver. Got to get rid of him. Congrats. And then congrats, you're getting, like, a worse wide receiver at that 112 pick. Like, Elijah Moore would easily be, like, the wide receiver four in this class. Yeah, he, he'd be right behind that, the, that first year for me, behind... London, I can, I can never remember which is his first name, Drake London or London Drake, because London Drake sounds like a great name. That does sound like a cool name. Yeah. But it's not his name. Behind London Burks and Wilson, whatever order you have them in. And right. maybe even JMO if you have him up there. But I would probably put JMO and Elijah in that second tier because while Jameson Williams could have that, put it all together, like, he has a lot of raw talent. He has to put it together in the NFL. And for right now, it seems with Jared Goff as his quarterback. We've seen Elijah Moore do it in the NFL. He just had a very good wide receiver added to him. And you're hoping on Zach Wilson. So right. he, between those two. So I would drop Elijah Moore probably as my wide receiver four. Yeah, that's probably where I would have him as well. All right, so let's move on to Cole Komet's teammate in Darnell Mooney, like I did foreshadow before, and I'll pretend I did that on purpose as a nice little uh, hosting mechanism because I had one beautiful transition before, so I'm, I'm building on this. Um, I, I said it all before, you know, why he's a buy right now, because it didn't really do anything to make it not. <laughs> you know, we, we knew they were bringing in a wide receiver. I expected more than... They put decent capital in him, but it seemed like the wrong capital. Right. Does that mean? It's very weird. Like, he, he seems like he's like a Cordell Patterson, Devin Hester player. He's well, they, they took him in like the second or the third, right? When he should right. have been like, like a fifth. Which but, is like three rounds higher than they got Darnell Mooney. Yeah. So you can play the draft capital game. <laughs> but uh, no. Yeah, it's no. Darnell Mooney. All right, so this one's nice and quick and easy. 12-team Superflex, Darnell Mooney or the 111? Again, going into where do you fit Darnell Mooney in this draft class? The analyzer has Mooney worth 109.6 and the 111 at 222.6. This is smash Mooney. I don't, like, people who haven't done rookie drafts yet, I feel like don't realize what they're looking at at the 111. <laughs> I mean, in a super flex league, it's not. I almost said it's not terrible. Um, in a super flex league, excellent. They uploaded May. You're looking at Christian Watson, George Pickens, James Cook, Jahan Dotson. So you're looking at potentially the wide receiver one for Aaron Rodgers, but I think that he's a landmine. Um, he scares me. I'm not going to lie. I would rather have Darno Mooney. You're looking at the wide receiver three for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Maybe the two next year if they don't re-sign Deontay or trade Claypool or whatever it is. But he's got target competition for sure and um, is getting targets from Mitch Trubisky and or Kenny Pickett. Um, and then James Cook is the backup running back or the third down running back in Buffalo. Um, and if Jahan Dotson's still there too, then you have the wide receiver two for Carson Wentz. On Washington, maybe the wide receiver one if they don't re-sign McLaurin next year. So that like, why don't you just take the wide receiver one for the Bears, 
and just call it a day. So last season in a Matt Nagy coached weird quarterback season, Mooney put up 12.2, 12.2 points per game. That's not great. I mean, he was wide receiver 36, which is insanely replaceable, but dang, he was that low. Yeah. He finished the season after the bye, 23 points, 17 points, seven, three, 11, 10, 19. Why am I seeing wide receiver 25? What are you looking at? Points per game. Oh, okay. He was wide receiver 25 in fantasy points. <laughs> but yes, 36 in points per game. But also, I mean, if we were just to do the last couple of games, it would be a lot higher. I mean, this is uh -huh. post Andy Dalton. This is with bad coach Justin Fields. And I am Justin Fields to the moon kind of guy because I like the talent. I like the player. And anything's better than Matt Nagy as a coach. So I think there's a step up from this. I think if anything, Mooney will find himself being very safe and safe more along the lines of wide receiver 25 as opposed to wide receiver 36. What is the difference between Darno Mooney and Terry McLaurin? We've seen McLaurin give us a high end wide receiver two finish. Uh, no, I don't think he's ever been inside the top 18. If I remember that stat correctly. All right. Well, I'm too lazy to second guess you on that. So I'll just say, okay, never mind. Then nothing. There's absolutely nothing. You know what the difference is? Probably like four years. <laughs> the, the age. <laughs> like the end of your stat line. I'm going to. Here, I'm going to read both of their stat lines. I'm not going to tell you which one was which. 140 targets, 80 receptions, 1,050 yards, and four touchdowns. 131 targets, 77 receptions, 1,050 yards, and five touchdowns. <laughs> wow. They're like they, identical. They both need better quarterbacks. The first well, one was Mooney. The second one was Terry McLaurin. So McLaurin had one more touchdown on four fewer receptions that you already had job. nine more they had like the same they were separated by two yards oh then i maybe then i might moody, think I moody had one. nine more targets oh nice yeah that was the yeah. that that was the difference between their two stat lines but for some reason i feel like everybody has way more confidence in terry mclaurin than they do in darnell mooney and i feel like you could mm -hmm. also argue that justin fields is a better quarterback than carson wentz so <laughs> so and also, one of them brought in a wide receiver, uh, an actual good wide receiver that we knew his name of before the NFL draft, um, and the other team did not. So, <laughs> okay, so yeah, I think we're both taking Mooney on this one, even though that is very point different from the analyzer. Next one, twelve team, one quarterback. Ooh, okay, Travis Kelsey, Darnell Mooney, and a twenty-four second for Travis Etienne. TJ Hawkinson and a 25 first. First of all, good on you, DLF, for having 25 picks in the analyzer already. And wow, someone's trading their 25 first already. Travis Kelsey, 406.3. Darnell Mooney, 222.6. Hey, completely even with that 111 from before, even though we're completely just changing everything. But it's just funny that they're the same number. Travis Kelsey, 406.3. Donald Mooney, 222.6. The 24 second is 80.4 for a total of 709.3. ETN comes in at 384.2. Hawkinson, 230. And the 25 first, for some reason, comes in at 162.4. I pretty easily want Kelsey and Mooney. I knew you would. <laughs> I... But Okay, Kel no. Kelsey's Hold better on. than Hawk. Right. Well, yeah. And you'd rather have Kelsey than Hawkinson. So here's my thing. I'm not on this huge slide of Kelsey value like a lot of people are. I don't get it. He's done nothing. Like, you're trying to predict a cliff. The point of a cliff is that it's unpredictable. You don't see signs, you just randomly go down. When you're walking with a blindfold on, you don't know a cliff is coming. You know if you're going up or downhill. You can't. If you want to, if you want to score points, you got to keep walking. That's the only. That's the only thing you can do. You can't just sit down. 
So if you want to keep scoring points, you keep Travis Kelsey. Because even if he has a tight end five, six season, you'll still be able to get something for him because of the whatever the tight end landscape is, he will always have a place as a top 12 tight end until he retires. Like Jason Witten came back for the Raiders and people were taking him as a top 12 tight end because he's Jason Witten and he's always been a top 12 tight end. Like Kelsey will always have a place there. And that man not only has the nickname of a Greek God, he has the, the structure of one. Like, like this man isn't just going to go away because he's 32. And they just got rid of Tyreek Hill. I was going to say, that's the funny part is like, he honestly might be better. Cause like he, who, he could have like 170 targets this year. Yeah. And everything we just said about Darnell Mooney before stays exactly where it is. And 24 second is cool. I'm still worried about ETN and Dobbins. I, you know, for very similar reasons, which is why I brought up Dobbins name out of nowhere. Like we don't, we have no signs of help. We have no signs of what that offense is going to be. This isn't the same team that brought him in. They didn't bring another running back in, which I guess is a good sign. But broken feet are scary for mm -hmm. football players. Well, for anyone, really. I don't want my foot to be broken. But, you know, for football players, especially one that need to plant, need to cut, and have people landing on their feet, it's, it's scary. So I don't know what he's coming back as. And I love the idea. I've always loved the idea of TJ Hawkinson. Man, I want that guy to put it together. Mm -hmm. So to me, this is super easily the Travis Kelsey side. I don't really know what else to add on to that. I mean, I think I think it's just crazy that you can get Travis Kelsey and Darnell Mooney for this cheap. That 25 first did it, baby. That's the 2025 first. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's about that time for some horrible trades. 12 team super flex. Jamar Chase and Zach Wilson for Dak Prescott. Jamar Chase is worth more on the analyzer. Oh, yeah. I totally knew that everybody would. I think most everybody would take Jamar Chase over Dak Prescott. In a startup, might be probably not. But, like, I could see this happening and just being like, I don't know, man. Like, that's Jamar Chase. You could do whatever you want with that guy. Why would you add something to him to get something like that? That's my problem with this trade more than anything else. It's like, I have Kyle Pitts on the team and someone offered me like, I can't remember like one of the higher rent quarterbacks for Pitts in a first. And I'm just like, why would I add to Pitts to get something like it just, right. it no, like I get it. He has that value. He, you know, Pitts is a first round pick chase. I don't care if it's super flex should probably still be a first round pick. Oh yeah. Like to me, I won't, I don't want to add to that to get something. If I'm trading chase away, give me a quarterback. That's two steps below Dak Prescott and the equivalent, the wide receiver equivalent of Zach Wilson, you know, this isn't, I'm going to, this isn't horrible. I don't think this is horrible. I don't think I, it's not right. That's true. <laughs> Like, value-wise, I get it. You're paying... Oh, that was mean. I almost called Zach Wilson a non-quarterback. You're paying the non-quarterback tax, but, you know, or you're paying the Zach Wilson tax, but you you don't need to. This is wrong. This is not... Yeah, trade away, trade away, trade away Jamar Chase if you want to. Just not like this. <laughs> not like this. Not like this. You... <laughs> You're I'm stuck. done. I got nothing. I got yeah. nothing more I can say about this. I was trying to. It, this is the DLF trade show. Russ Fisher, Dynasty Addos, Addison Hayes, out of Maze, Hayes underscore. I see you next time. <laughs>